Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. We got some good news about Raspberry Pi OS from the Raspberry Pi Foundation recently, and we're going to take a look at some of the new changes. I'm going to do some testing here, but before we get started, I did kind of just want to go over a few things that have changed with Raspberry Pi OS. This is the December 2020 update. I will leave a link to the Raspberry Pi Foundation's blog in the description so you can go ahead and read through all of this. But it looks like a really awesome update for all the Raspberry Pi OS users out there, like myself. So first up, main thing, Chromium Browser is now version 84. It's been updated, and along with this update, they've done a lot of testing, and now we're actually seeing some pretty good video playback in YouTube. Now this has been one of my main gripes about the Raspberry Pi 4 since it released. We have had really horrible YouTube video playback on the Pi 4, even overclocked. There were some tweaks out there that you could do to get a little better out of it, but hopefully this update fixes all of that. They've also done a lot of testing with Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and Zoom, so they should run a lot smoother on the Raspberry Pi using Chromium. Like I mentioned, I'm not gonna be going over all of the changes, just some more notable ones and stuff that we can test in this video real quick. But another big change here has to do with the audio of Raspberry Pi OS. They've swapped over to Pulse Audio, and from now on, with future updates, it will be using Pulse Audio. Back in the day, we were using ALSA, and there's a lot about that right here. You can go ahead and read through this, like I mentioned. But I've personally preferred Pulse Audio on a lot of my Linux devices, especially when it comes to ARM single board computers. I think I get better quality out of it, and it could be just a placebo effect. But from now on, the Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspberry Pi OS will be using Pulse Audio. And finally, something that's important to a lot of people, especially in the times we're in right now, printing it's really been hit or miss on the Raspberry Pi, believe it or not. There were third-party applications that you could download in Raspberry Pi OS and get your printer up and working wirelessly or wired, it's really up to you, and the main one was called Cups. But now a lot of this has been integrated into Raspberry Pi OS, and once you're updated, you should be able to see your home printers. Now I have one of those Wi-Fi printers, I got kids and we're always having to print documents because we're doing homeschooling and things like that, or not exactly homeschooling, but school from home, which is a horrible situation that we've been in because of the times we're in right now. And to have the printing capabilities built into Raspberry Pi OS is just going to make life easier on a lot of people who use a Raspberry Pi, let's say, as their main desktop. So yeah, I mean, there's some other stuff that's changed in here. We have some new accessibility features and things like that. But all you need to do to update, it's super simple. From terminal, you're going to run sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now because I'm on an older version of Raspberry Pi OS. I'll let it finish up and then we're going to test some YouTube video playback and then we're going to go in and see if I can connect to my in-home printer, which is connected through my Wi-Fi network. So like I mentioned, super easy to update. Make sure you're connected over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You're going to go ahead and open up Terminal. You can do it from the top here or press Control-Alt-T on your keyboard. Then we're going to type in sudo apt update, press Enter. It's going to fetch everything we need, give it a little time to finish up. Once the apt update is finished, we're going to type in sudo apt full upgrade. Press enter, and it's now going to upgrade Raspberry Pi OS. My prompt you, type Y, enter, and let it finish. This could take a little while depending on your internet connection, but as soon as it's finished, we're just going to type in sudo reboot, or we can use the drop down here and reboot our system. Then we'll be on the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. I'm gonna let this finish up and then we'll be back with the fully updated system. All right, so here we are. I'm fully updated with this version of Raspberry Pi OS. Very first thing I wanted to check out were these new print settings. So from the drop down, we're gonna to head to, uh, let's say preferences, there it is, print settings. And it's already showing up. So yeah, that is pretty awesome. I'm actually going to print something real quick. Let me go ahead and see if I can just print. Oh, I don't want to print. Okay, hold on one second. I was going to print a picture, but I don't want to waste that much ink. So we'll just go to text editor and let's see. Do we have print options here? Print my Canon downstairs and print. And it looks like that worked. And it worked out just fine. I did have to go to the printer and allow this device to print from that printer. 
but as you can see, it works great. And I know this isn't a big deal for a lot of people, but to have this built into Raspberry Pi OS after using it for so long, it kind of is a big deal if you're into the Raspberry Pi. And the last thing I want to test is some YouTube video playback. I'm really excited about this and I hope we get some good performance because this is personally the first time I'm testing it with this new update. We're going to go ahead and open up Chromium. So we're going to go ahead and pause it. Let's take this up as high as we can go. And that's 1080p on this one. Right click, stats for nerds, full screen it. So if we take a look up in the top left hand corner, these are our drop frames. And of course, we are getting some drops going on. But I'm going to tell you right now that this is nothing compared to how it used to be. 11 drop frames out of 500, and it's continuously going without dropping anymore. Even with hacks and special browsers, we really haven't had this kind of YouTube video playback at 1080p out of the Raspberry Pi 4 yet. This is really awesome. I'm definitely going to test a couple more here. So this was 1080p, 24 FPS. Let's find the 60 FPS video. All right, so here we are. 1080p, 60 FPS. Up here we have our frame counter. Let's play. And as you can see, we're getting a ton of drop frames. It's definitely not as bad as it used to be, but uh, you will notice those kind of drop frames with the naked eye. So 1080p 60 isn't looking great here. Let's try 720 60. And even at 72060, we're still getting a ton of drop frames. Now, if it wasn't so many, I mean, we're at 300 out of 1,000, then I'd say it was good to go, but that's just way too many frames to be dropping. Now, there is one thing that we can do here. Instead of 1080p 60, I can disable 60 FPS video and try 1080p 30 and see how it does with that. So that's actually kind of odd. I'm using H264ify. I have blocked 60 FPS video here, but unfortunately, with this enabled, I can only go up to 720p. It's kind of odd, so I'm just going to go full screen with it and see what it does at 720p 30. Yeah, and something like this would be perfectly watchable. 20 out of 500 ain't bad at all. But I was really hoping for some decent 60 FPS playback. But even at 720p, you saw those frames drop in quite a bit. So yeah, I was really hoping for like a magical jump in 1080p 60 FPS playback on the Raspberry Pi 4 with this new Raspberry Pi OS update. I can tell you with 100% confidence that it is better than it used to be, but it's still not great performance in my opinion. Now, as we saw, 1080p, 24 FPS videos are going to be perfectly watchable, but if you want to do anything at 1080p, 60 through YouTube, you're going to get a lot of drop frames like we just saw. Either way you look at it, this is still a great update for the Raspberry Pi 4. We have that Pulse audio. We also have those printer settings built in, so we can easily connect to our printer and print our documents out. And when it really comes down to it, I would recommend just installing H264ify. You can get it from the Google Chrome store. You enable it, it's only going to give you 720p, 30fps playback on basically any video on YouTube. But video playback will be way smoother with something like this enabled. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I was really hoping for a giant jump forward for video playback on the Pi 4, but unfortunately we got a couple steps, but it's still not there yet. I will leave a link to the Raspberry Pi Foundation's change log on this new Raspberry Pi OS update. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.